everyone, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be chatting through my seasonal fall favorites. I always love putting these videos together as it gives me an opportunity to talk about all of my favorite things from fashion to television shows to music to home decor and this particular video is going to have a special focus on all things fall across all of those categories. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into the video. So the first thing I'm actually going to chat about is actually this video's sponsor and also one of my favorites for this past season and that is Cereal box. Since starting working from home, one of the things I've really discovered I love is actually listening to fiction via audio. I have listened to more things in audiobook format this year than I have in any other year of my life combined. Given this, Cereal Box has been such an incredible thing to integrate into my daily audiobook consumption. If you guys are not familiar, Cereal Box publishes immersive fiction in both audiobook and ebook format sold together in one low price. They're honestly so much fun to listen to. Not only are they released in like shorter chapters, but really manageable just to fit within my workday, either during a lunch break or just kind of a lull in my day. It's also just an awesome way that I've been able to break up my day and listen to some really awesome stories. On top of that, you can easily talk back and forth between the ebook or the audiobook format. The actual interface is beautiful, hence the immersive nature. Not only is the ebook just stunning to read along with, but also the audio quality is so high. Not only is the voice acting really excellent, they also have background noises and other elements to make the story really, really immersive. They also have a huge catalog of stories already published on their site, over 150 titles to choose from, so there's really a story for everyone. And they're across so many different genres, from sci-fi fantasy, which is one that I really love, obviously, historical fiction, as well as mystery, thriller, and horror. One of these stories I'm honestly so excited for is The Haunting of Beatrix Green. The first chapter in text is out now with the rest of the stories beginning to air starting October 28th. It's honestly so good for the fall season. The genre is historical horror, and it's said to be for fans of Sherlock Holmes, which I am a huge fan of. This is set in Victorian England, and we follow a savvy spirit Median who essentially has to outsmart her most important client yet, who is a scientist determined to basically prove her to be a fraud. But their game of wits has fatal consequences as they accidentally summon a vengeful spirit. So they're kind of like working together to try to banish these ghosts. And I think there's mystery and possibly romance along the way. Again, I've already checked out chapter one and I'm really excited for the rest of the chapters which are releasing soon. I'll leave a link down below if you guys are interested in learning more about Serial Box. You can always listen to the first chapter of any serial that they have on their site for free, which is always really handy as you kind of decide which ones might be for you. As well as I also have a discount code where you guys can get your first cereal box story for 50% off, which I'll have in the description and right here on the screen. Big shout out to them again for working with me for this video, but let's jump into the rest of the favorites I have for this season. So jumping into the rest of the favorites, I'm going to start with the few kind of miscellaneous items I have to show off. Everything in this video is going to be very fall cozy oriented because that's honestly just kind of the mood I'm in. So speaking of fall, the first thing I'm going to show off is this pumpkin. This is a flickering pumpkin from Target that I have bought five of. They're incredible. They basically are battery operated and they flicker and light up. It honestly brought me so much joy. They provide such a cozy atmosphere all around my apartment. And in general, I've decorated for fall probably the most intensely I ever have in the past. And it's brought me so much happiness. Again, I'm spending almost all of my time in my apartment. So I have found decorating for any reason, for any holiday, is just something to look forward to. It provides a really fun, cozy atmosphere, and it's definitely something I'm gonna be carrying through to the holidays, and will likely do for the rest of my life to come, because I love a fall leaf garland, a flickering pumpkin. These again are from Target. I think they're only like five to $10. They also released little Christmas trees for the holiday, which I'm definitely gonna be picking up soon to replace, to swap out my pumpkins for Christmas trees when the time comes. But yeah, this is probably my favorite fall decor item I have bought. I feel like it provides such atmosphere and they're pretty affordable and cute and I can keep them for seasons to come. From there, I also have two nail polishes I wanna show off. I've really enjoyed painting my nails this year and I recently picked up some fall colors, which I've been really enjoying. The first one I've had on my nails almost exclusively for the past month and it's this sort of mustard color. I'll leave both of these down below. I love mustard both on my food, on my clothes, so I figured let's put it on my nails. I think this is just fun and bright and very fall. And then from there and what I've actually painted my nails with, I also have this sort of khaki green color. 
it's really nice and very fall. These are kind of like unusual fall color choices, at least for me. Normally I go for like maroons or berries, but I've been trying to be a little more adventurous with my color palette. Um, and both of these have been such a joy. And the nail polish brand I've also been a huge fan of. It's a small business and a local Brooklyn brand, so I'm happy to buy and support from them. Plus they make amazing colors and they last really, really well in the nail. And the last non-clothing item I'm going to mention is a video game, and that is Super Mario All-Stars, which is a Nintendo Switch game that is a re-release of three Mario games, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. I've always been a huge Mario fan. I've always been a huge RPG-based video game fan, but particularly Super Mario Sunshine holds such a special place in my heart. I have been waiting for a re-release of this game basically since the end of the GameCube era. I love this Mario game. In my opinion, it's the best one. Obviously, I have a lot of nostalgia attached to it, but I, this is also probably the Mario game I've played the most. I was a pretty sickly kid, so I used to have to stay home a lot uh, from school, and when I did, I would play this game forward and back. I've probably beaten it like 10 times, so being able to play it, especially now, has been bringing me so much comfort and it's just been a lot of fun so I'm so excited it was released and I have it in my hands and I'm definitely going to be beating Mario 64 as well as Super Mario Galaxy as well but I've been really focusing my attention on Super Mario Sunshine and it's been so much fun the only beach vacation I need in 2020 honestly. There I'm going to jump into a few fall clothing items I've been really enjoying starting first with the non Madewell pieces I don't know about you guys, but I have been really focused on dressing as cozy as I possibly can. Um, I just want to be comfortable, but also feel cute, so it's like a nice balance. So the first thing I'm going to show off is a new crew neck sweater. If there's one thing I love buying, it's a crew neck sweatshirt, um, and it's actually this little uh, Keel James Patrick. I won't lie, I have been dreaming of getting something from this store for a really long time, and Clay and I this year just decided to splurge and treat ourselves to some sweatshirts that we both know we'll get a lot of wear out of. I got the Leaf Peeper one, as you'll see, it's embroidered on here. I'll say these are really really soft it's unisex sizing as well so keep that in mind if you do end up picking it up I will say these are definitely pricier but the quality is definitely there it brings me a lot of joy to wear around the house on hikes it's also something I know that I will own for a very long time um, from there I have two pairs of leggings I want to talk about leggings are a new thing for me so I feel like I've gone through a lot of trial an error, but I have found two leggings from two different brands that I think are excellent. The first one is a pair from Aerie from the Offline collection. These are so soft and also so much more affordable than I feel like I see leggings in other places, especially trendy leggings. These are a really nice brown color. They have pockets, they're super stretchy, incredibly soft, not restrictive any way, shape, or form. Great for lounging around the house, which is why I buy leggings, not gonna lie. I'm not I'm not running a marathon out here. But um, yeah, these are so cute. They also go really well with uh, fall colors. And in general, I've always been a huge fan of Aerie. Their stuff is really soft, really comfortable, and in my opinion, at a pretty good price point. So I picked these up, and I'm a really big fan of their entire offline collection, not gonna lie. And then from there, an Instagram ad finally got me. And honestly, in my opinion, lived up to the hype. And I got a pair of Girlfriend Collective leggings. This brand is one I think is really cool. They have incredibly inclusive sizing and all of their stuff is made from like recycled bottles. So they're really, really eco-conscious as well, which I think is great in terms of brand values. In terms of the quality of the leggings, super soft, super comfy. And I love all the different color options they have. I feel like they have really great staple colors and kind of fun seasonal colors as well, which is, this is a seasonal color that I just really liked. It has this like berry color. They're soft, they're comfy. I have no complaints. From there, let's move through my little pile of Madewell clothes that I have picked up throughout the last couple of months and have been wearing nonstop. The first is this space dyed sweater from Madewell that I know a lot of you guys have been loving as well. This is sort of a really nice muted, very 90s grunge made well sweater that is actually super soft. I'll say it's a little crop, so keep that in mind if you might want to size up if you prefer a longer sweater. Has a bit of a flare sleeve. I feel like it's muted, but it has a wonderful fall color palette. Soft and fun, and it's like always on sale, so never buy this full price. Wait for a made well sale, because there's always one going on. Speaking of soft and cozy things, Madewell also like recently released like a loungewear line, which I'm always down to lounge. <laughs> and so I picked up a hoodie from that. Um, I really loved this sort of brushed copper 
dark mustard color. It's honestly so soft and I really like hoodies and been wearing them a lot more than I've ever have in my entire life to layer over turtlenecks, layer under jackets. They're just really cozy and nice to have on hand. I've been wearing them on hikes around the house obviously. But yeah, I bought this. It's honestly I think my first hoodie and I have not been disappointed. This also has more of like a feminine crop fit so I feel like it kind of sits nicer with jeans without being too oversized. I've been very pleased so far. Next thing I'm gonna quickly talk about is this turtleneck, which I just think is so fun. It has this sort of navy and pink coloring throughout it. I've worn this recently in a video and I've just been layering it with everything. I've been throwing flannels over this, jackets over it. Sort of a nice light to mid weight in terms of a turtleneck, so it can still be layered, but it does provide a lot more warmth than like the average cotton turtleneck. But yeah, I love the colors. I love the retro feel of this. I've always been a big fan of a turtleneck. I'm just trying to channel Steve Jobs at all times. And yeah, I, this, is, this has been a great purchase. And the last thing I'm gonna quickly mention from Madewell are button down flannel shirts. This I bought last year and have been wearing nonstop this year as well. It's this beautiful green color. It's still available on their site. I've been layering this over turtlenecks and t-shirts and I picked up this guy this year which is a corduroy button down shirt. So a little different than a flannel but the vibe is the exact same. Similarly, I've been wearing this over turtlenecks, this turtleneck especially, and t-shirts as well. I've been wearing this with t-shirts and leggings. It just, it's been so comfortable to lounge around the house. And honestly, comfort is key right now. And that's definitely the vibe I'm carrying out for the rest of 2020. All right, so those are all of my clothing favorites for the past season. And now let's jump into music and TV. For music, honestly, I've only been listening to two albums for the most part. One of them is Folklore by Taylor. Taylor Swift, which obviously came out in July, but I honestly feel like it's had great fall vibes, great road trip vibes. I feel like Clay and I have been trying to drive around just to see the sights from the windows of a car, and having that on, it's just been really, really nice. I don't know. It's calm. It's chill. It's great background music, and it's definitely personally my favorite Taylor Swift album. Though I'll say, I ordered the vinyl and like a sweatshirt from the shop back in July. Still have not gotten it. Has anyone else not gotten their Taylor Swift merch? Just me. And from there, I've also been listening to Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers. Phoebe Bridgers, I really fell in love with earlier this year, and lucky for me, she came out with another release in the summer as well. This album is one I truly cannot stop listening to. I bought the vinyl. It's just been so good and really again chill vibes. I just love like atmospheric background music that I can also jam to but have on while I'm reading. So both of these ladies have been providing me with all the good cozy vibes, you know. Just saying. Moving on now to television shows, which I have been watching a lot of. I'm gonna mention just a few animes, but I have been possibly interested in creating a full anime wrap up in a separate video because I have been watching so much anime this year and I have a big passion for anime, um, but I'll just focus on a few that are really top of mind. The first one is Haiku, which I have been buddy watching with Starla. This show is everything you need right now. If you have not watched Haiku, stop what you're doing, exit out of this video, watch it. It is a volleyball competition anime and you might be sitting there like, I don't care about volleyball. Same. But now all I care about is volleyball. I care about the teams. I care about the passion. You'll be rooting for everyone. You'll know way more about a sport than you probably ever had before. It is charming. It is entertaining. I have loved it to no end. Haiku for life. Watch out. I'm only be wearing haiku merch for the foreseeable future. Volleyball is life. Volleyball is love. I've also started watching Stein's Gate recently with Clay. Um, this is a show that I had seen partway through, so I restarted it and watching it with Clay. This is like a time travel mystery based anime. Please don't spoil it for me if you have seen it. I know it's full of twists and turns. So far it's definitely really entertaining. It has a good mix of humor as well as like this sort of bizarre time travel element. I always love parallel universe concepts so I'm excited to see how this plays out in an anime. We're also watching Mushishi which is one of my favorite animes of all time. It's an episodic anime following kind of a traveling medicine Mushi who kind of helps people who've been infected or impacted by Mushishi in this land. It's beautiful, atmospheric, and just full of nature and some of the most stunning animation ever. It's also episodic so we've been watching it at night. It's calming and peaceful. Sometimes it's very dark but it kind of like 
eases our anxiety from the day. It's such a stunning show. The last anime I will mention that we're watching right now is Dragon Ball Z Kai. I've never seen Dragon Ball Z before ever. Clay is obviously a big fan and I promised that after we finished Naruto we would watch Dragon Ball Z. So here we are. I'd say we're about halfway through Dragon Ball Z Kai. We're past the Frieza arc and we're now in the Android arc if that means anything to Dragon Ball Z fans out there. It's been an enjoyable watch for me. It's not my favorite show in anime but I obviously have a lot of respect for Dragon Ball Z. It's also been fun just to begin to understand a lot of the pop culture references that come out of this show because it is rampant both across anime and just in general culture. So I've been enjoying it a lot. I'm a big Bulma fan so she's got style for days so I'm really excited to watch more and finish this show and then move on to another Shonen great. What will we watch next? Other non-anime TV shows we have been watching. Primarily we've been watching a lot of Schitt's Creek. I have seen through season five but I started over to watch with Clay and now we are back almost done with season five so we're gonna be watching season six together. This show is heartwarming and funny and full of family. It's just a show that's like designed to make you feel good on the inside, like give you those warm and fuzzy feelings plus the humor and the jokes just build and land. Clay and I just like crack up watching the show. I have literally seen every episode and I still laugh at all of the jokes. It's just so well crafted. Love every second of it. We're also watching Ozark, which is our more serious drama. Um, we've seen season one, we started season two, though we've kind of put it on the back burner as we have just been really marathoning Shit's Creek. I would say Ozark I think is pretty good. I feel like we're watching it for the third season, which has incredible reviews. I definitely don't have any major complaints about season one or what we've seen of season two. It's just also not the greatest thing we've ever seen, but it's definitely interesting. It has like high stakes in terms of the money laundering that's a central part of the plot but also the family drama and the setting itself is just interesting so it's definitely captured our attention but I wouldn't say it's our favorite drama of the year by any stretch of the imagination and then the last show I'm gonna mention is the Great British Baking Show or the Great British Bake Off um, which is airing now and luckily in the States we're able to see the episodes as they air in the UK or at least it releases on Friday this is the comfort show I needed I love Bake Off I love everything about it I love the tent I love the music I love the baking I love the camaraderie it's so charming. And I really wish they would make like maybe one in America. It's more that I just want more Bake Off content. I, I want every country in the world to come out with a Bake Off uh, structured reality television show so I can watch it and just be happy all the time. So definitely a lot of television shows. We've been pretty much focusing primarily on TV, but I do have two movies that are actually very fall movies that I would love to chat about, both of which I had never seen before and I really enjoyed both. The first one is When Harry Met Sally. This movie was great. I loved this movie. This is probably one of my favorite rom-coms of all time. Meg Ryan, incredible, the humor, the dialogue. I also just felt like it was like more realistic of a love story. It's also a perfect example of the classic enemies to friends to lovers plot line. It's charming, it has such fall vibes, loved every second of it. And then we also watched You Got Mail, which is another classic 90s fall rom-com, also set in New York, but this time it's Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. I really enjoyed this one as well. Probably not as much as When Harry Met Sally, but it was great. I'm a big fan of Tom Hanks. I think the storyline maybe hasn't aged as well, but the concept of sharing letters digitally was really awesome and seeing two people kind of like fall in love from a distance. The whole battling bookshop element was definitely interesting. I would say the ultimate outcome of that battle was a little bizarre but for the most part Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks, very charming. I loved it. Again, fall in New York. What's there not to love? Definitely plan on watching more 90s rom-coms because I have not seen any of them so I have a giant backlog to catch up on. But both of those movies I did watch recently and I really enjoyed both of them. And those are all of my seasonal favorites. Per usual I'll have everything referenced and shown off in this video linked down below including a link to Cereal Box and my coupon code to get your first story for 50% off. Thanks again for watching this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye!